Howdy doody folks, hope you're doing well. Uh, today is possibly the last video in this sort of setup. Oh, we're gonna miss the table going along there, but uh, if you saw the last video with the whole neck problem, that was, I literally filmed that yesterday. For some reason, Mrs. Barry and I, we carried on last night, we did another coat on that ceiling. Oh, what a feeling when there's paint on the ceiling. The kitchen, by the next time we do a video, should be in there. But, as I mentioned in the last video, uh, it's gonna echo like absolute crazy. So, it means we're gonna have to get creative for the next few weeks, but that's my problem, not yours, and ultimately, it should look amazing with the light in there, and we're starting to get to the end of it. Very exciting. So see you next time, bye. Check your level player, no matter what you Only joking. I love it when the camera goes like that. Ah, there's all the white light at first, it's gonna adjust. There's a very popular recipe that you guys are tagging me in a lot at the moment, it's uh, by Tasty. This was going to be a Barry Charlie's video where I literally try and replicate that. It was a free course dinner in one pan and I think they did pizza, uh, they did jalapeno poppers and they did a, a Nutella s'mores kind of tray pie thing and I love that but I also thought it was kind of a bit too easy and also a bit too generic and I wanted to do something for a change, just a little bit less tasty-ish. I reached out to my lovely supporters on Patreon and we had a bit of a discussion here about the ingredients to add. Uh, there was just loads of discussion. It seemed to be like chicken and fish and vegetables seems to be what people would want in there uh, rather than the pizza. So we've kind of gone for that. And then, uh, where is it? Marjon, I think I pronounced this right. Marjon Vink from the Netherlands uh, talked about something called an apple bon. So we're actually gonna stick this dessert that I've never heard of, which is essentially like a puff pastry apple as one of our desserts, and the other one's gonna be a dunkable cheese thing, okay? Now, amazingly, next week, we should have the ovens available to start using them, much bigger ones, rather than that legend that has got us through the last few weeks. But unfortunately, I didn't really think about this this morning. I'm like, oh. Yes, it's not the biggest oven, so that's basically the space we've got to use for our three courses. So it's more of a challenge. Uh, the bread roll that I bought is enormous, so the starter's gonna take up most of it, but we're gonna get there. So by the end, we should have a lovely brie dip. Uh, we should have this baked apple bon thing, and then we're gonna actually steam some fish in a parcel with loads of veg. And uh, that's three courses in one pan. Let's do it. Okay, so this is the bread roll I'm using to put our cheese in, and as you can see, it's taken up a massive portion uh, of the pan already. I was gonna cut like a right angle on it so it tucks in neatly. It does have a random bumpy bit on it, so I might just take that bit off. Mm -mm. Oh, there we go. <laughs> just by forming a couple of those right angles, we get it just a lot tighter to that corner. Perfect. What I'm doing here is just taking off the lid like so. Now this is a pack of camembert cheese. Uh, and for me, this is a real struggle because it's not my top favorite thing, but I'm, I'm gonna push on, okay? But it's gonna help give us a shape to form a carcass for this to sit in the bread. Hopefully. <laughs> I can't see anything. All I'm doing is ripping out clumps of the bread into sort of cubed inchy portions, but we're not going right down to the bottom, okay? Foundation for the cheese to sit in. Let's have a look. I need a bit of play, come on. A little bit of pulling in. Oh, yes. Yes, I think we've gone low enough, yes. Oh, look at that. And we're gonna, do, 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 do. Yeah, you see? So I'm taking a little wedge out along the top of the cheese, so I'm gonna do that to all the other bits. So on top of the cheese, I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of light brown sugar. This is what I've done when we had it at Christmas, something like this, and it made me go, oh, I can kind of like this and a little bit of lemon zest as well. Um, we did add some cider, but I don't have any. I drunk it all during the lockdown. Okay, so that's just a teeny bit of oil in there. And for the crumbs, I'm just gonna just roll them round and get them just lightly coated in it. Bit of pepper. There we go. And they can be baked with it to dunk in the cheese. Okay, so just for the time being, I'm gonna put that to cover the whole area, but we've got those right angles on the bread. So let's push that in there. The lid goes on. And I'm putting those chunks of bread just around the outside. So it should still give me space over there for my apple and then the main along here. See, I mean, it's not gonna leak much, but yeah, that'll do. <laughs> 
the cheese is all there ready to go. When you would normally bake camembert like that, you would actually keep that seal on there. Bye. But bake it for about like 15 minutes or so, then take the lid off and warm it through just to make it gooey. But the lid that we're putting back on the bread should act as the shield to help us get through. Main course is gonna be steamed teriyaki salmon. Oh yeah. Did I just hear someone burp? Was that you, Amy? So we're gonna make our little teriyaki glaze first of all. You've seen me do this before, I think on a four, three, two, one. Honey, and then some soy sauce. And this is just a shot glass with some chopped garlic that I did earlier. Did, 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 did. Now this is another reason why there's a barrier around the bread because I don't want any of this with the salmon getting into the bread. <laughs> okay, so we're kind of left with a bit of like a, a corridor to put our salmon. I've got two salmon fillets actually, and then a bed of vegetables to sit it under. Uh, but I've cut a big old sheet of baking parchment here, and the aim is to sit all the ingredients on and then fold it over neatly so none of it escapes. I don't know if that's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to work out what to do next, right. I think we'll get it all lined up and then try and lift it in. So this is some stuff that I've prepped to go with the salmon that's gonna steam easily and cook in the same time. Because remember, this whole concept, the key is that you put it all in the oven in one go and it comes out as a three course meal. So we've got some spring onions, uh, aka scallions I think, tender stem broccoli, some mini uh, salad potatoes right here that I've cut nice and thin so that they cook quick, they'll go nice and soft, and this will absorb all the juices from that teriyaki as well. Oh, And also Patreon wanted a carrot, so I'm gonna julienne one of them right now. Using the uh, Barry Lewis one of course, but uh, doo -doo -doo, just some strands, ah, oh, some matchsticks of carrot. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Some matchstick carrots right there. That's gonna add some more texture. Let's make this work. This kind of feels like I'm about to wrap a Christmas present, which if you've ever received a Christmas present from me, which of course many of you have, um, you'll know I'm not amazing at. Uh, but what we can do is use this to gauge the width we've got. So we can use this as a sort of area. All right, that's, that's looking all right actually. That's quite good, I, I like this. Can we leave it at that? No. So I'm now gonna place Wrong fish, but you get the idea. Two salmon fillets. This has still got the skin on, but I don't mind the skin. It's up to you. You can remove it if you want. I'm not going to add the fluid just yet because it could just spill all over my table. We've been there before, people. But what I think I'll do... I've got to be honest with you, that's turned out amazingly. So let's get our teriyaki over the top of the salmon like this. And it doesn't matter because all that honey and soy is going to soak into it and like sort of tenderize all the vegetables too and give it some insane flavor. Wow, look at that. So now I just fold it up. Oh my gosh, <laughs> yes. Look. Wow, I'm making good. a three course dinner. Amazing. Do you want some? Okay, as long as the dessert doesn't taste of fish. Yeah. Now over the years I've learned when Mrs. Barry makes a hint on camera. So I have basically uh, just made a separate dam for our dessert, okay? So I've got a foil that I've just lipped up like so and then just put a baking parchment base inside it just to make it easier to get off potentially. Uh, so we're nearly ready there. It looks like the world's craziest lunchbox. So Marjon said this is something called an apple bol, but other people call it an apple bollen. I'm not quite sure, and I hope it's the same thing, but effectively I believe it is a whole apple that is cored and optionally peeled, then filled with a filling and wrapped in puff pastry and baked. I am going to be doing that right down there. I dug into my website and I found that someone had submitted a recipe for this about three years ago, but they actually had uh, raisins and nuts in there. So we're gonna do that just to give it a bit more padding out. So this obviously is optional. Um, if you've got like a nut allergy or something like that, you could probably just omit that and just have the raisins. Or I think Marjon suggested just doing the cinnamon and sugar, which is obviously this bit. So a good shake of that, about a teaspoon. And some light brown sugar. Oh yeah. Now last but not least it goes in there is some apple juice to kind of soak up that cinnamon and sugar and make it a bit more pliable to go inside the core of the apple. But I love it when you, I don't know if it's just me in the UK, you go to the shop and it says apple juice. Now this just says from concentrate and you know, it's very hard to get pure 100% apple juice. Next time you're in the supermarket, look for it, it says 100% apple juice. And then in really tiny letters from concentrate. Literally 2% apple, 98% pug. And give it a good old mix together and it should get absorbed up by the sugar and the cinnamon and be a lot more thicker in a minute. The actual cheese came with its own sort of amazing dish, which I think, I've called my apple already, will double up as a lovely little holder 
for it. Uh, so what we're going to do is, because uh, I already have cored it, got all the seeds and stuff out, we're going to peel it. I might regret this. I'm kind of thinking maybe the puff pastry will slide off. I don't know what it is. I'm alright with skin on fish, but like something like peel on an apple when it's baked, it always made me feel like really bleh as a kid. And a baked apple was one of my favourite things growing up. This is uh, some puff pastry sheet that's uh, gone to room temperature. I'm just going to get a square for now. It might be plenty, but I just want to make sure uh, that I've got enough. Oh yeah, <laughs> I've got like plenty there. Right, now we put the filling in that we just did a minute ago. So the cinnamon flavour with the raisins and the nuts and the sweetness of the sugar and the apple juice too. Just go in there. So now we completely encase the apple. Okay, <laughs> it's kind of like Play-Doh. Just make sure that's nice and tightly sealed in place. Bye ya. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna look amazing like an apple one by the time I'm done. We're giving it an egg wash, which could really change the cooking time of this compared to the other bits. This is gonna make it go nice and golden brown. And then we can just sprinkle some more sugar. Oh, and I am covering this in chocolate sauce and serving it with ice cream, by the way, so life is good. But that is going to sit, hopefully, yes, <laughs> in our little cheese dish and be baked as a dessert now. I hope this works. Okay, so my oven has preheated to 350F, uh, like a moderate heat, really. It's hard to think that I've got <laughs> three courses in my hand right here. I'm praying this works. Oh my gosh, please work. Please work. Okay. Oh no, my shelf's too high. I'm gonna give this 20 minutes. Disclaimer, it might be a little bit longer than that, but I'm gonna trust my instincts. We're just gonna go for it. So hopefully by the end, the fish will all be steamed, the teriyaki sauce drizzling through those softened vegetables. The apple cinnamon blob thing will basically just be a big blob thing, which should taste phenomenal. And the bread should be gooey, cheesy, with little toasted like off cuts just around the side that we ripped out earlier. I'm <laughs> just gonna keep my eye on it. That's all I'm gonna, that's literally all I'm gonna do. I actually really like this concept. So if you've got any ideas for more of these yourself and have got like three main starter and desserts on one tray, maybe we could do like a mini playlist of this. This is, doesn't smell of fish though, which is not a bad thing. Literally got 30 seconds to go. It's times like this that I really wish we didn't just have the table here like that and this kitchen was ready. I'm gonna do my best to present this, but um, I just need to let you know, the smell all of a sudden has just got amazing. The cheese waft around here. Oh, mm. oh the smell. Honestly, it's so good. The biggest question mark, oh wow, have a listen. I can see that's done. This looks good. Little crispy, look, crispy. But I don't know what's going on in here. Let's find out. Oh my gosh. Look, 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 look. Oh. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's gonna steam the camera now! <laughs> oh, look at that. That's amazing. I put a little bit more lemon zest, basil and pepper into there. <laughs> that is so good. Not that I think it needs it, but I've got some ice cream and I'm just putting that. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. It nearly, it nearly, nearly touched the salmon. Don't do it now, mate, don't do it now. Wow, we got away with that. <laughs> So got away with that. And a little drizzle of chocolate sauce. Oh my gosh! Ah, I'm dancing! I'm actually dancing. I'm dad dancing. I'm sorry if you see a really bad thumbnail, but I'm here on my own and this is the best I can do without it all spilling out. I'm so much more excited to eat some. <laughs> I love the fact that these croutons are toasted as well. Look at that! That's good. Oh, I mean, I'm tolerating it because I <laughs> I love cheese when it's melted, apart from that can be a bit strong. It tastes like Christmas and very muddy, but it's nice. I didn't sell that, did I? <laughs> I'm gonna try and get a bit of everything and let's not forget, it's gonna have that honey teriyaki taste too. Delicate, succulent, flavor-packed, sweet, wholesome, Oh, 
What have we done? I don't know what's going to happen here. <laughs> oh, what's going to happen is my knife's going to go right through it. Oh, we've got a nice soft baked apple with the raisins and nuts inside, the cinnamon infused in there and the ice cream. But let's not care about the ice cream. Let's just get some of this. Oh, it's soft. Smell it, smell it, smell it. Oh. That is phenomenal. We've got kind of like three times of the year in this tray. We've got like kind of like a festive -y vibe here. Uh, we've got like a summer vibe with this, like the teriyaki and the salmon, the outdoor eating thing. And that's kind of like got a Halloween autumnal vibe to it. And this tray is quite hot. <laughs> Do you know what? I think we have now created another playlist. I think we should, I, this has been really fun for me and they all taste phenomenal. It worked. Maybe we'll just call this one pan free meals or one free course meal pan part one. I want to do more. So bombard me down below with your suggestions and we will fill this playlist up with vegetarian options, maybe different cuisines. I nearly did a curry one, like a whole Indian vibe. That was going to be interesting. One perk of being here on my own, that is going to make a stonking brunch indeed. So that's what I'm doing. Don't forget to follow me on social media for loads of behind the scenes bits and bobs. Subscribe if you haven't already for regular videos each week. And of course, if you would like to consider becoming a patron and getting involved in coming up with ideas like this, please consider doing so. Nothing essential, but it does help support the channel. I love you and I'm going to love eating this. See you next time. Bye. Check your level player, no matter what your style, the kitchen's for me, Simon's moustache, goatee, maybe all three. I wonder if we could do a dog version, huh? Three dog treats in one tray, they would go mental. Cheers.